It's Get Out of Here. I'm Warren Levinson. The Trump administration really doesn't want you to go to Cuba. It has its reasons. The thousands of Cubans who fled after the 1959 revolution and settled here, some still carrying financial claims, or just a grudge. The still unexplained injuries suffered by U.S. diplomatic personnel from what may have been some kind of sonic weapon. Havana's support for the repressive Maduro regime in Venezuela. The sheer irritation of a communist government living right next door. The U.S. has narrowed the conditions under which Americans may travel to Cuba. Most recently, it moved to bar airlines from flying between the United States and any Cuban city other than Havana. The explosion of U.S. tourism to Cuba has slowed to a trickle. But it's still legal for Americans to go to Cuba, and the extra paperwork is worth the effort, from the natural beauty of its parks and beaches to the charm of a capital half a millennium old. Michael Weisenstein is the Associated Press's news director for the Caribbean. He is based in Havana and joins us from there to say more. Michael Weisenstein, come December, Trump administration says flights to Cuba only to Havana, canceling uh, travel to other cities. What's likely to be the practical effect if uh, an American wants to go to Cuba? Uh, an American can still come to Cuba. Many Americans, if not most, that are, that are coming to Cuba fly to Havana anyway. So I think that this really affects uh, Cubans and Cuban Americans who are visiting family far outside Havana in cities in the, the center and the east of the country. If you're going to cities far outside Havana, how hard is it to get there if you can't fly directly in? It's not easy. It's uh, Ground transportation in Cuba is tough. Um, there are decent tour buses, but they're not, you know, of the quality you'll find in, in most other countries, and, and getting tickets is is hard, so it, it does make it more difficult to visit the rest of the country. Now, this is really just the latest um, move from Washington since the Trump administration took office, telling Americans, we really don't want you to go there, right? Exactly, yes. They do not want Americans coming. Uh, but Americans are coming, yes? Fewer. Um, the uh, the number of Americans, it's, it's not actually dropping, but the, the growth, which was tremendous under Obama, has gone to next to nothing. And, uh, yeah, it's having a, a big effect here. I mean, American tourism was a, was a big boost to, to Cuba during the Obama years, and, and it's really fallen off. Have we seen uh, Americans replaced by others coming through? No, we, we, we really haven't. I mean, there's, America is such a natural market for tourism to Cuba, and the growth was so spectacular under Obama that, you know, you've seen a few more Russians, you've seen a few more other nationalities, but... You've also seen, um, you know, Europeans dropping off a little bit for reasons that don't really have to do with with Trump. So there's there's really, but we're talking about you know a few thousand, a few tens of thousands up and down, as opposed to the hundreds and hundreds of thousands more every year that were coming to to Obama. So it's not it's not the same scale. You can't it, you can't replace the Americans under Obama with a few more French or Germans. So if you do manage to get through to Havana, because Americans still can come to Cuba, what do you need to not miss? Oh, that's a good question. Right now is the 500th anniversary of Havana. So there's in the, in the coming weeks, there's lots of events uh, around that 500th anniversary. Um, what would you not miss? I mean, I think the, the one thing that really everyone sees and and rightly so is, is old Havana which is which is beautifully restored uh, walk them on along the Malecon is is fantastic and and there's lots of interesting uh, restaurants and and sort of private art galleries and and all of those are, are really interesting and I, I wouldn't miss and how do uh, people in Cuba respond to Americans coming Oh, I mean, people in Cuba love Americans. I mean, everyone in Cuba has family in South Florida or New Jersey. I mean, it's Cuba is a very friendly and welcoming place, and they're delighted to, to see tourists of any kind. But Americans, I think, particularly, they, they feel a, a connection, and probably because of the tensions between the two countries, they feel a little bit extra, you know, burden to, to prove that Cubans actually do love Americans coming here, which which they very much do. 
and accommodations, obviously, there was all this talk, particularly during the Obama years, that uh, Cuban accommodations would eventually reach the stage of other destinations around the world, or at least have other Caribbean destinations. Has that been stalled? I think it's absolutely been stalled. I mean, hotels here are just not uh, at the level they are in other places. They're run by the state. Many of them are run by a sort of military conglomerate, and the service is sort of what you would expect. And the, the issue of salaries is um, is very much present. I mean, the hotel workers still earn twenty, thirty, forty dollars a month. So it's there's just the incentives to provide great service are just not there in ma- in many cases. Private accommodations can be very good. Um, people, you know, are reserving through Airbnb. That has fallen off a lot, and the private sector has taken a huge hit under Obama, uh, under the new Trump regulations, um, but it's still, a, it's still a, a good option. And they are building new five-star hotels all around Havana that are certainly much better than the older hotels, but still, you know, they're, they're not, if you went to a, a Cancun or a Dominican Republic, the quality will just be better. I mean, of course, Cuba has many, many things that those places don't have, and it's it's a whole other destination. But it, it comes with all the logistical difficulties of, of being in a, in a communist country. Right. If you're coming to Cuba, you're coming for the cultural attraction of a different kind of place, a different kind of society. You're not coming for the luxury accommodations. Do not come for the luxury accommodations. Let's talk about the 500th anniversary of Havana. That actually sounds really uh, kind of interesting. What kind of events are going on? There are going to be, there's fireworks shows, there's really nice sort of uh, public art displays in streets, a, a lot of um, monuments and historic sites have, have been renovated. They're under the difficult circumstances economically that Cuba is in. They are doing a, uh, a very, you know, full effort to, uh, to make the city so beautiful and attractive during, uh, during this anniversary. And give us a, a, a hint of, you know, what's in that, fo- or where the, the founding of Havana uh, goes back to. You know, most Americans, uh, especially Americans without relatives in Cuba, seem to think of uh, uh, Cuba as Havana as something that probably started around 1959, or older people, maybe the Batista years in the early 50s. But Obviously, with a 500-year history, there's a lot more to tell. Right. This is a city that, that, that dates back to Spanish colonization, and there is still you know, a, a lot, because of the, the communist history of the country and the revolution that it had and the isolation from the U.S., the colonial center is not just a sort of little nub in the middle of you know, big office buildings and strip malls like it is in, in, in so many other Latin, you know, Spanish colonial capitals. It's, you can really see in Havana the, the old city, you can still see the walls of the old city. And then the outlying neighborhoods are, you know, a hundred years later and a hundred years later, but everything is, is pretty much still intact. Um, and does, with it, aside from these new hotels, um, you know, not very modern, and that come. You know, there's beautiful Art Deco buildings from the the twenties and thirties. There's um, sort of more modern buildings from the from the fifties, but still all all very well, at least untouched, if not very well preserved. Because maintenance here is obviously a big problem. Now, I have traveled uh, very little around uh, Latin America, but one thing I noticed, uh, and, and maybe it just happened to be the places that I have been, is a kind of um, embrace of uh, Native American culture in a way that you kind of don't see in much of the United States. Um, that in the United States, we have basically obliterated it. Um, and in places like uh, Mexico and um, in uh, Brazil, there just seems it, it just seems more present. Is that true in Cuba as well? It, no, Cuba is a place where the indigenous most of the Caribbean is a place where the indigenous people were really basically wiped out as a as a sort of extant population. I mean, there there are still people with indigenous roots in Cuba, but the indigenous, you know, the, the, the living, you know, indigenous culture and the, you know, millions of indigenous people with, you know, um, 
political organization and, and, and with, a, with a presence in the life of the nation that you see in uh, Brazil or Mexico or Ecuador, um, or, you know, really all, all of South America and much of Central America. In the Caribbean, you, you don't see it. I mean, because these were island people and because they were, um, you know, so vulnerable to the, the terrible effects of Spanish colonization, there really isn't any more indigenous culture here. So essentially, history starts with the arrival of the Spanish. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the the hist- you know, the buildings and and um, artifacts start. Yes, start with start with the Spanish. You there there well, aren't kind of indigenous sites to go visit in Cuba. Or you can find them, but there there'll be very little. There'll be very little there. It's it's not like a Mexico where you can see pyramids and and. And, and things of that nature. You're listening to Get Out of Here, the AP Travel Podcast. We're talking with uh, Michael Weisenstein of our Havana Bureau. Uh, we'll be back in a minute with a view of what you can see in Cuba outside of Havana, if you can get there. It's Get Out of Here, the AP Travel Podcast, talking with Caribbean News Director Michael Weisenstein in Havana. So, Michael, if you are lucky enough to get into Havana and you want to get to the rest of the country and you're lucky enough to get out of the rest of the country, where would you be going? I know there are great beaches. There's great, uh, for instance, diving. Uh, where would people, where are people going? There, I mean, there are hundreds, thousands of, of, of places to go and it, it's a, it's an extremely varied country. There's, yeah, tremendous beaches, tremendous diving. Cuba's coral reefs are, are, pretty much the best preserved in the in the Caribbean and uh, in the entire region. Um, there is tobacco growing country to the west of Havana, which is beautiful. Um, there are mountains. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a very varied and diverse country in terms of nature. And, and there's also other Spanish colonial cities, which are beautiful and also really nicely preserved and, and well worth visiting. Do you get much opportunity to get out of town other than going on assignments, which could, of course, take you pretty much anywhere? It's, you know, getting even when you live here, it's not easy uh, to get out. It's, you know, cars and car parts are difficult. Gas is difficult. Good places to to find to stay can be difficult. So we don't get out as much as we'd like to, but but yeah, I mean, I've I've had a, a good opportunity to to get away, at least from time to time on the weekend. And where have you gone? We go within a sort of weekend's drive of Havana. You can go to Vinales, which is a beautiful valley where there's tobacco growing and and hiking and, and lots of sort of outdoor sports to to participate in, and has beaches about an hour and a half away. You can go to Playa Giron, which is the Bay of Pigs, famous from the the U.S. backed attack, but is has amazingly preserved um, reefs and is right um, next to a, a huge a swamp national park, which has lots of interesting things to see and 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 bird watching. Uh, you can go a bit further, about four hours drive, and go to Trinidad, which is a, a spectacular colonial city with with lots to do so that's sort of the 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 circuit that one goes on for a sort of a weekend or long weekend out of havana and other than the occasional bus i take it that really public transit is kind of uh, non-existent it's exists but if you're operating on a sort of first world clock it's just it's not you can't count on it to get you any place on a reliable time like if you want to get out for the weekend and get back by sunday night you've got to be in a in your own car or a, or a car and driver that you've hired if, if you're counting on doing it by bus maybe it'll happen but you could also be spending the day in the bus station waiting for them to fix the bus or for the bus to arrive because it was delayed outside it's, it's a whole other it's a whole other sort of pers- 
sense of time here. Right. So I'm okay. So let's say I'm looking at a winter trip and I'm looking at the Caribbean and I'm looking at Curacao and I'm looking at the Bahamas and any number of a, a dozen or or more other places. And I'm looking at, at Cuba. What is it that would bring me to Cuba that would that I wouldn't get in those other places? Uh, something that you're not, it's just not like any other place in the world. It's, I, I think all of those places are great. Uh, to a large extent, a uh, tourist experience will be fairly like every other. Um, the hotels are international chains. The development looks a bit the same. In many of these places, you'll see a, a Subway or a Starbucks. Um, it's, it's, you're, you're in the same general type of place. Obviously, the, the, it's an island. It's a, the nature is different, but it, you're not going to feel as if you've really left where you're from anymore in many of these places. Cuba is, ju is just, you, if you haven't been here, it's like uh, no other place. And generally, if you come here, and particularly if you patronize the, the small but vibrant private sector, you're doing a, a, a good deed in, in helping support uh, people that are sort of trying to make their way in a, in a state-controlled economy. Right. And Cuba, if you're in Cuba, as you say, you know you're in Cuba and you know you can't possibly be anywhere else. It, absolutely, yes. You, you're, you, it, it's, like, it's like no other place in, in many ways. And people are really, um, really are friendly and, and really are wonderful. I mean, they're, the more I travel in the region, the more I realize that there is something. It's a stereotype, but it, it has a... a, a great degree of truth. People are really are sort of genuinely friendly and welcoming and, and interested in talking to, uh, to foreigners here and sort of learning about you and you learning a bit about them. I mean, there's always going to be people who just want to make a buck off a tourist, which isn't bad if they're providing a service, but there also is a, a, an openness and friendliness here that I, I think is hard to find in many other places. And finally, I can't turn away from a conversation about Cuba without talking about the music. What's the music scene like these days? The music scene is great. There's always music here. It Just be warned, particularly if you're over 30, it tends to start really late. So be prepared to, you know, show to start at midnight or one and go till very early in the morning. But there's, there's a million things to... Uh, to, to go see and, and, and hear. There's a, the music scene has not slackened off um, with the tough times under Trump. Okay, well, that that's good to know. And besides, okay, midnight shows, 1 a.m. shows, you know, that there's a reason that uh, people sleep in the, in the heat of the midday. So um, there it is right there. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Michael Weisenstein, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. My pleasure. Michael Weisenstein is the AP News Director for the Caribbean. He's based in Havana. And now, my favorite trip. For this one, we're staying in Cuba. Havis Dawson, the rights manager for a New York literary agency, went to Cuba with a group tour in 2016 during the flowering of U.S. tourism there. You know, one of the things that was so nice about going on a structured tour like that was that they told you, they helped you understand what you saw. Otherwise, I would have had no idea why there were all these Lada automobiles, all these Eastern European cars everywhere. But I was given to understand it was because the um, the Russians had brought them over, and then when the Russians left during what the Cubans call the, the special period, the special time, when no one had anything, anything to eat, anything, uh, any bicycles, uh, no steel, they had nothing when the Soviet Union collapsed. I wouldn't really have understood uh, what was going on had I not had that history lesson told me, uh, progressed. You have much impression of Cuban people, how they responded to you? They were wonderful people everywhere we went. The other thing that we kept hearing was about the Cuban government's emphasis on the arts, emphasis on education. It really was evident, I felt anyway, in the people that we met as far as the thoughtfulness with which they uh, responded to everything. I, and, and, the, um, uh, so, and we saw uh, dance troops and arts troops that were obviously supported by the government in a way that the United States government doesn't do. 
do we really need dance? I don't know, but they were paying to have dance, and it was nice to see. And you really got the uh, sense of people's pride in the country and some discomfort that they had not progressed more, but great pride that they were consciously making an effort to, to join the rest of the progressive world. Havis Dawson went to Cuba in 2016. And that's the show. Get Out of Here, the award-winning Get Out of Here. We took first place in the Society of American Travel Writers competition for podcasts for Beth Harpaz's report on her visit last year to the Lynching Memorial and Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama. Get Out of Here is a production of the Associated Press in partnership with Westwood One, produced under the supervision of Nikessa Moody and Peter Costanzo. I'm Warren Levinson. We'll see you next time.